So today I want to talk about double standards and justice in the United States. And I want to do this by exploring two stories that involve the Capitol building. The first is that of Jenny Cudd, a woman who was accused of participating in the insurrection on January 6th in the U.S. Capitol. And the second is the story of Greg Greycloud, a Crow Creek Sioux tribe citizen who was invited into the Senate chamber when they voted in 2014 for the Keystone XL pipeline. Now, I want to highlight these two stories to explore just the level of uh, double standard that occurs in the country. And I hope that I can make that case and point that out as part of this video. So with that said, let's take a look at the first story, that of Jenny Cudd. So again, Jenny Cudd is a, wo a woman who is accused of participating in the January 6th insurrection in the Capitol. On, um, during their time with dealing with the courts and everything, the lawyers for Jenny Cudd requested that the courts requested the court's blessing for Cud to travel to Mexico between February 18th and February 21st for a prepaid work-related bonding retreat with her employees and their spouses. Now, Cud is accused of um, two misdemeanor offenses. The first is uh, entering a federal building without permission, and the second is engaging in disorderly conduct. From what I'm able to find, they, uh, she faces up to a year and a half in prison if convicted on both charges, as well as $100,000 in fines. Now, this seems like a really big request as far as I'm concerned. You have someone who participated or is alleged to have participated in the insurrection in the Capitol. And you're still trying to gauge all of that. And even with no prior offenses, even with the standing that they have property in, you know, their hometown and they're a business owner, it seems very odd to me that someone who was part of an insurrection should be treated in such a way as to allow them to flee the country for a few days. It just seems like an odd request in the first, first place. But the prosecutors took no position. And according to USA Today, this is someone who has said, I was here today on January 6th when the new revolution started at the Capitol. You know, this doesn't seem like a fair request. You know, and there's video evidence of Jenny Cudd being there and talking about the destruction of property, at the very least, of them breaking into Nancy Pelosi's office. So we do have some sort of confirmation that Jenny Cudd was indeed there. And I want to just briefly show that off vandalize anything but we did also we didn't vandalize anything but we did <laughs> we did as i say that uh we did break down the um nancy pelosi's office door and uh somebody stole her gavel and uh took a picture sitting in the chair flipping off the camera and that was on fox news um, Patriots got down on the floor and were um, sitting in the House members in the senator's chair. So basically, she looks really proud of herself. And from what I'm able to, uh, you know, see in all of this, her story is essentially one where she was riled up like a lot of the Trump supporters, went into the Capitol building, and then bragged about it on social media, like everyone else seemed to do at that event. And when faced with that consequence and reality, the request for them to travel to another country seems, again, rather odd to me. And I do have the actual... Um, you know, court information. Miss Cud is currently charged with two misdemeanor offenses and is on pretrial release. Miss Cud has no criminal history. Miss Cud's a small business owner. Prior to the alleged offense, Miss Cud planned a prepaid uh, vacation. Miss Cud has appeared at scheduled court appearances and has been consistent. Miss Cud's pretrial service officer uh, asked for the defendant to travel, and there was nothing stopping, and the court ended up granting this travel request. And I'm sorry, this speaks to a huge double standard in the way things are run. 
First and foremost, I need to just point out that in the Anti-Drug Abuse Act of 1986, there were mandatory minimum offenses for marijuana possession that went for two to five years. When storming the Capitol gives you a, you know, potential sentence of a year to a year and a half versus when five grams of crack cocaine gives you a mandatory sentence of five years. And that's a felony charge. There's a problem in this country. And this, this again, was from 1986. And there's probably been some changes to certain aspects of it over the years. But this is the kind of country and duality that we live in. And this also speaks to someone who is not in any way apologetic for what they did at the Capitol. In fact, she says she'll do it again. In an interview with a uh, Texas ABC affiliate, News West 9, she denied any wrongdoing saying, I went inside the Capitol completely legally and I did not hurt anything or anybody or destroy any property. Now, the video evidence saying that we destroyed Nancy Pelosi's office and all this, maybe they, oh, she did not particularly do any of the actual vandalism. But the fact that we're, you know, looking at that level of things and saying that she didn't do anything wrong and was perfectly legally in the building is objectively wrong if she's tried on these, you know, crimes. She was not invited into that building and that space and, again, does not seem to be sorry or apologetic about any of it. Further, Cud told ABC affiliate that she'd received several different death threats and her business received 500 negative reviews on Google from across the country rather than from uh, local patrons. So people are upset. And I'm not going to defend the death threats specifically um, at all. But getting negative reviews on Google, I mean, that's really not that big of a deal. You know? And that, that's what, you know, she's worried about. So what they're trying to do is cancel me because I stood up for what I believe in. And I can tell you this, it's, and it's what I've told everybody, I would do it again in a heartbeat cut set. So I just want to throw it out there that this is the story of a woman who participated or is alleged to have participated in the insurrection on the Capitol, was there, did brag about stuff going on, uh, you know, bragged about stuff beforehand, was very vocal afterward about how they are not sorry and would do it again. And then we have the story of Greg Graycloud. Again, a member, uh, sorry, a Crow Creek Sioux tribe citizen who was arrested in 2014 after being invited into the Senate chamber. He, uh, Graycloud never damaged any building property he never trespassed into the House or Senate floor for a selfie, never posed with any images. And when the uh, bill for the Keystone XL pipeline failed, Grey Cloud offered the room a traditional song of peace. This is something that this person offered as part of their culture and identity, a song of peace. And According to Grey Cloud, that was a perfect song to sing for those leaders who stood for us and listened to the people and heard our struggle. And so I wanted to honor them in that way. And this is the response that occurred. He was landed in jail. He was arrested on the spot, as were the four people who came in with him. So, you know, what we have is that the police took Grey Cloud into the hallway and escorted him through the building and outside. A police vehicle then came and took him to jail, where he sat for about five hours. A group of college students was also in the gallery opposing the pipeline, and four of them were also arrested. Um, Grey Cloud faced serious charges and had multiple court appearances spread out for nearly 18 months, he said, before the judge finally dismissed the case. Grey Cloud said he wasn't allowed back at the Capitol during the legal process. Once it was over, he said he went back with gifts for some of the senators who voted down the pipeline bill. So you have this story now where this person gave, offered a song of peace to honor the people, to give respect and thanks to the people who basically put down a pipeline that he saw as detrimental for a number of different reasons. 
And the response was that he had was thrown in jail for five hours and he had 18 months of court issues. And yes, the court case was eventually dismissed. But I just imagine what would have been the reaction if he had, you know, asked for a trip to travel or, you know, even more to the point, how people reacted to this, given that he didn't even do anything. He was in a place that he was invited to. He didn't even do anything wrong. He was a person who came in, invited, into a space, and offered a song of peace. And this is how we treat someone who does that. And when you juxtapose that against a woman who is not apologetic for the thing that she did wrong, is not apologetic for storming the Capitol building and being part of that space, who posted selfies on um, Twitter and is now asking for, you know, this unheard of request to go to Mexico when there's so many other issues going on. It just seems to be a slap in the face at how this country functions. It seems like a double standard across the board that, you know, you have all these mandatory minimum sentences and felony charges. You have this case with Grey Cloud, who, again, just offered a song of peace and faced 18 months of court appearances and wasn't allowed back in the Capitol. And still, at the end of that, brought people who kicked him out. Democrats, mind you, because this was under Elizabeth Warren. Democrats, gifts to the senators. He brought gifts to the senators who voted down the pipeline. Even after all of that. And I'm sorry, that speaks to a double standard to me. And if this isn't an explanation enough, I don't know what is to talk about the level of double standard that exists in this country. With that said, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button and bell for notifications. You can follow me on Twitter or check out my Discord in the description down below. My name is Anarchist Tara, and I hope you enjoyed watching.